is going on, Premier League fans? Welcome back to another episode of Arch Rivals. It has been an electric match week 12 where we have seen the likes of Newcastle defeated, Tottenham defeated, Manchester City and Chelsea played to an exciting 4-4 draw. All kinds of stuff happening. Yeah. Uh, guys, did you have a favorite fixture of the week? I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> did you? Chelsea hasn't won or gotten any points from City since that fateful night in 2021 uh, when Kai Havertz slots home the winning goal in the Champions League in the final. Champions League final. <laughs> it's been six games of us losing yeah. to Man City. And, and you, you bolster out a four-goal draw at home. And wow. I'll take it. I will take it, considering Chelsea's like tough schedule that they're rolling through right now. They beat Tottenham, a nine-man Tottenham. They draw City at home. Good result, ultimately. Ultimately, great game, too. Like, yeah. if you're just a Honest, fan of football, yeah. like, I don't care what you think about oil money or if Abramovich is a war criminal or <laughs> if Todd Bowley is just, like, a money-hungry American. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't it was care. good football, it's man. It's going down it as a Premier football. League classic. I don't know if it was... Good football because <laughs> I feel like a lot of the goals in this game are from just direct errors by somebody. It was exciting. But it was, it was oh, exciting. Dude, this is one of the best Premier League fixtures or like matches in I don't know five, ten years probably. The last like, four four draw in the Premier League was Liverpool versus Arsenal. Andy Arshavin four goal yeah. masterclass. Mm-hmm. That Arshav- was the last four four. Yeah. Arshavin scoring Ooh, four. Okay. Is his first name Andy? Uh, Andre. No, it was close. Yeah, nice try. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, overall thoughts on the game? Defensive horror show from Man City and somewhat from Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, Thiago Silva having both a good and a bad game at the same time. I don't know. He deflects in an own goal and then also scores like a bullet header. I think he's unfortunate to deflect that goal in. Yeah. But um, his header was clean. Everybody, The, the announcer was like, <clears throat> oh, he, uh, Emerson should do better to save that. And I'm like, bro, it was... The thing was bulleted into the corner. Like, I don't know. It was low. Like, yeah. I don't know. If I'm a goalie, I'm not expecting it to go, like, far post from there. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just a bullet header. Like, it is a good header. And He's the fourth oldest person to score in the Premier League. Yeah, and f- oldest in 10-plus years, I believe. Yeah, yeah. There, was a, there was a stat on that. I, yeah. that. I know Connor Gallagher mentioned that that was a... That was whipped up off the training pitch. Really? And so he, Connor Gallagher got the assist on that. Mm. He was oh, it looked corner. Corner up. Yeah. Yeah. So I love whenever you can see something like that go down and it's very intentional. So mm-hmm. that was cool. So cool. Man. And then it didn't take uh it didn't take too much longer before Raheem the Dream came back to bite his old team in the arse. And we're up two one in the thirty seventh minute and I'm flying high and the rest of all Chelsea fans are flying high and then it it took 10 more minutes, and then uh, Erling Holland just kind of like cocks a bundle, ball into bundle the net. one in, yeah. <laughs> Balls a cock into the net. Well, we didn't, <laughs> we, uh, we didn't talk about the, the like kind of controversial penalty that Erling Holland got uh, to like start the game off. I thought it was kind of weak, honestly, because I don't think he's ever getting to that ball. And I think there's a foul on Reese James in the buildup. Mm. Like, those are just such tough calls to make, especially going back on VAR and watching it in slow mo. I feel like it makes it look far worse than it actually is. Whenever a player is like on the back of another player, it's just no one knows how hard somebody was pushing the other person, except for the two people involved. Yeah. On field decisions, a penalty. Anthony Taylor in the checkbook of uh, Manchester City, and yep. you, there's nothing there to over, be able to overturn that ever. I, don't I think, think it's I think it's an interesting decision for sure to have Anthony Taylor come back and ref the biggest game of the week between Chelsea and City after being demoted to the championship yeah. for a game. That, that is crazy. That's weird. Like but, why why isn't he taking like Aston Villa Fulham? <laughs> like just I something that's not gonna like as high stakes. Yeah. I guess they're like, well, Chelsea's in tenth, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, fair enough. Mid table club. Mid table yeah. club. Yeah. Um, but I honestly thought that Kukurea did pull down Holland. Okay. Even, but it, like I said off air, like it's like the LeBron James effect. Like the dude is so big and Kukurea is so small 
that it doesn't look like he should be going down on that, but Kukurea is just like all over him. So I can't I can't actually be mad. Yeah. Um Reese James did kind of get smacked though at the beginning of that. Yeah, Doku that like up. throws Chelsea like Nico Jackson into Reese James and he's like laying down in the penalty area. And I mm. thought maybe they, they might have called that back. But look, it's one nil. We already talked about the two Chelsea goals. Um on that second one, the Raheem Sterling one, Gavardiol just like gets it lost in his feet. Yeah, it's like it's, stuck. It's like a bad ball, <laughs> and it just ends up getting to Reese James. Yeah, but, he was lucky. He's lucky to yeah. keep to keep it. Yeah, Chelsea, Chelsea are lucky too that Raheem Sterling decided to show up for a big game as well. I think I would consider you guys Raheem's lucky in that been, aspect. Raheem's been amazing for Chelsea. So yeah, this, I, I'm getting this year mad. For the most part. Uh, yeah, well, Chelsea haven't really been all that amazing up until now, <clears> so that's why I kind of say that. Um, what is it? Eleven goals between Raheem, Nico, and Cole Palmer. Yeah, Nico Jackson has yeah. six of them. Cole Palmer has four of them. So you do the math there. It's one goal for Raheem Sterling. That's 11. It's 11 <laughs> overall. Isn't that what you just said? Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's with better that than return. a lot of top three. I think that's better than Arsenal's top three attack. You know what? From my perspective as a Manchester City fan, I really felt like in his final season at Man City, he was not pulling his weight against the big fixtures. And I would say that in this game, he was probably your best player. I think he was absolutely... He, he cooked Doku several times. Um took on Kyle Walker multiple times and beat him. And if you're beating Kyle Walker, you know, you're going to get your flowers because that is not ever an easy matchup in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Um, We've so. seen him do well against, like, the world's best with Mbappe in France-England matchups and stuff. Yeah. So, Manuel Kanji, bullet header, completely wide open in the yeah. penalty area. Yeah. Another defensive lapse. That is where I thought some, like, how is Chelsea not defending yeah. that better? He was so wide open. Just – Standing there, yeah, jump straight up. <sighs> that takes us into halftime, and then they come back out in the second half and get the. That's the Erling Holland cocking the ball into the goal. Yes, um, or vice versa, whatever you said earlier. <laughs> oh yeah, um, I there's that. some beautiful build up on that goal as well. Yeah, there I mean, is. obviously the finish is well. He scores with between his legs, but. Yeah, and yeah, they were, like, looking up. for a handball afterwards, weren't they? Because they were, like, Maybe, trying yeah. to see if he, oh. like, touched it with his hand before it fully crossed the line, which yeah. I, feel, I feel like that's harsh when you're, like, sliding on the ground. If they, that, I don't think that could ever be a handball, and if it was, the game is just dead. I it, agree. W- I think all they were checking for is if he, like, reached out and, like, pushed the ball it along. Into the net. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't do that. <laughs> Gotta though. be that. Yeah. And then Rodri popping up with another big goal. Pretty lucky. I would say with this one, like he hits it well and it could go in, I guess if Sanchez doesn't make a save, but it goes from going to like the bottom right hand corner of the goal to the bottom left hand corner off of Tiago Silva. So you think it was going in? I don't even know if it was actually going in. It was definitely on target. I don't know if it was going in though. The first, the first shot, yeah, the first hit. Mm, I think Tiago Silva is so unlucky to, cause he got that, he got that goal, but he's unlucky to, to give up a, a known goal there. Do they give it to Rodri? Yeah. Really? It's a Rodri goal with an Erling Holland assist. That yep. is so crazy. Damn. And then in the dying moments of we the game. We did skip over the, the Nicholas Jackson goal. Oh, yeah, we did. To uh, to put us back. Level 3-3. Three, three. 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 Yeah, level 3-3. Yeah. Three, three. And that was like a deflection and he off the post and he ends up just like. Or no, no it was off it the was, goalkeeper. Yeah, Connor yeah. Gallagher just bullets one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he just sweeps it up. Nicholas Jackson, man, he's coming back. He's got four in his last two. Yeah, I mean that looks good. It's not an impressive goal. I don't. That is it's an a impressive striker's goal. goal. It's a striker's he's, goal. He's where he needs if to Holland be. Holland scores that, no one says a word. They're he's exactly like, okay, you're right. right because Holland has other better goals in his repertoire. Okay. What what the Holland hell, would score? A goal what the hell like does that? Nicholas Jackson have? He's got that. Yeah. He's got six goals and a Dudu Bukaki hat trick against Tottenham against a dead horse Tottenham team. I don't care about the man. I'll be honest. <clears throat> I'll be honest. Getting he's coming back and I'll be impressed. He's coming. He's coming after the, after the, the international, international break. break yeah. So get ready. It's going to be a different Chelsea squad out there. Um, three, three. And then the Rodri goal. Yep. Yeah. And God. then dying moments of the game. Armando Broya has come on for Caicedo in the 90th minute. And Ruben Diaz, horror show tackle. 
Riley has been arguing for the past like really, five Really, you're going to go there? Yeah, I was going to let it slide. He goes, Ruben Diaz got ball. Zero ball. Go watch he that. He does get a little pinch. He He's might, obviously he, look, trying he, to scoop the ball out from underneath Broya's feet. And all he and does it is completely scoop wrong. Armando Broya off of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> that is debatable. It's a pen 100%. And uh, they give it to the young former Man City man, Cole Palmer. Four goals, four assists on the season. He's coming into his own. Uh, mm-hmm. Who is the commentator on that? Jury, maybe? He um, he says that uh, we just watched a boy... Become a man. Become a man. Yeah. In yeah what did he moment. say? Man City's boy, scored. Chelsea's man, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, He hasn't scored an open play goal yet, has he? Pens only, four but pens. But he creates the chances, and also I nobody agree. else... He's looked good. It's but. interesting that like of all the, the talent that Chelsea has... He's the one who is trusted oh, to just, take the yeah. pens. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I'm still going to give him his flowers for that. Yeah, give my club its flowers, too, for developing that player for you. So, right. thanks. Well, I'm going to take him right here's, away for selling him. Here's what Pep Guardiola had to say about the Cole Palmer situation. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but Cole arrived and accepted some processes. And then after one or two years said, no, I don't want to play here. I am not going to play. But I said, Riyad Mahrez is leaving. You are going to get a chance here. And he said, no, I am not going to play here. I want to leave. And I said, okay, leave. Damn. So he wanted out. He bet on himself. That's, yeah. that's actually really unfortunate because I was very excited <clears throat> for him to start getting more playing time because he was having a great year with uh, the the England U20s or U21s. They won the U21 World Cup. Mm-hmm. And I was excited, man. I was like, oh, him and Foden, like two Man City young boys, like ready to make it to the first team and give Man City some illustriousness to like their academy, like actual homegrown, making it to the biggest stage in the world. He broke my heart, man. You guys already have so many just like not wingers, but just midfielders that could play across that front. I think Bernardo Silva could line. play anywhere in the whole yeah, squad. But really it's could. not it's could, not the homegrown man. That's what that's the dream. I, I think know. Cole Palmer was onto it. He saw the vision that they were just gonna buy Jeremy Doku after buying Jack Grealish, right? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. he saw that that was what could happen. He saw Phil Foden, his fellow Englishman, kind of taking over that squad as well. He saw he saw the vision with Julian Alvarez probably. He's like, dang, I don't know if I'm gonna actually play. Dude, but I think if he would have looked at Phil Foden and recognized, like, damn, if I put the work in, like, Pep is going to put me in the squad. Yeah, like, it was the same with Foden. He's been, it's been more and more time over the last three years, and like now he's pretty much a. Cons- I mean, Man City are a rotation squad, but he's pretty much a consistent starter. Foden is. I'll ask you: Would you rather be a rotation player, or would you rather be the guy? Because right now, Cole Palmer is turning into the guy at Chelsea. For the second smallest club in London, I just don't know, man. I don't know if that would be me. I'd stay right home. Unreal. (laughs) Unreal. Speaking of an unreal fixture, Wolves coming off of an unfortunate loss to Sheffield United. Come back in the 90th and 96th minute to win it against a broken Tottenham team. Is really the broken? Damn. It's funny how they go from 10 unbeaten matches to back-to-back losses. Yeah. Well, I think that's... like This would have been a great test for this team if they didn't have like a million injuries now. Like James Madison, probably their best player, most yeah. important player, out. Mickey Van de Ven, probably Besides their Son. most dependable, out. Son is still in, but now you have no creativity in the midfield. And I don't see any of these midfielders doing much other than just like passing the ball from side to side. Brennan Johnson's looked exciting. Yeah. He had a goal contribution in his past two games. So, I mean, he scores the first goal in this game in like Mm -hmm. the third minute off of a nice little back heel by Kulisewski. And then it goes to Pedro Porro who just plays it across the box and he taps it in. But Tottenham like did not do anything else. Like Wolves dominated this game after that. I would say like the XG is 2.15 to 0.7. Mm. Shots are seventeen to six. Yeah, for Wolves. So maybe maybe Tottenham is a broken side now. I just think I would have liked to have seen 
the reaction with their full team to like losing an important game mm-hmm. like that Chelsea game. Yeah. And I don't really know how to feel about dude it's hard though like losing a caliber player like james madison like that was your star man signing and it was coming to fruition throughout the that 10 game run of of unbeaten play and for him to to go down injured for what is it like a couple months yeah he's out until january and they're just missing like their whole back line in this pedro porter is the only person in their back line that's consistently started Dyer had to come in for Romero Oof. Davies has to come in for Van de Ven who's injured and Udo- <clears throat> Udogi got a red in the last game so Emerson Royal is starting at left back mm-hmm. so they're just like I feel bad for Vicario because now he's just really hung out there to dry constantly tested and the front line is just not getting any service which is what they've been receiving plenty mm-hmm. of with James Madison and that team Mm-hmm. I don't want to minimize what Wolves was able to do here. I agree. Because if you're if you're like fighting to get a to get a goal for ninety minutes, like and then you not you don't, it can be pretty demoralizing. But um, they end up Pablo Sarabia is able to get his goal in the ninety first minute. Dude, it's a Talk dirty goal. A it is. Yeah. 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 Two one, touch like bringing onto his volley. other foot. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. It was, it was nasty. And then to win it was Mario Lamina. With that, Par- that was Sar- a crazy goal as well, like mm-hmm. two touch banger. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Pablo Sarabia assist on that as well. He comes off the bench and just makes, you know, magic happen in the 90th minute. It sucks that they're missing Pedro Neto, but the fact that they can get a win like this without him is huge, considering the circumstances of losing to like the worst team in the league last week. Mm-hmm. It's, it's definitely a big bounce back. This was kind of a bounce back game for both of these teams, and Wolves just wanted it more. I'm interested to see what happens with Pedro Neto. How bad his injury is? Let's see if I. They can said it was only on like there. a few weeks, I believe. Yeah, yeah it does I'm, say I'm late November it. on FOTMOP. Late November, yeah. okay. So Hamstring he's, injury. He's not supposed to be out for a long period of time. Wing Hee Chan doesn't get anything in this game, which sucks because he's been he's been kind of cooking. Hot. Yeah. Um, Lamina popping up with an important, you know, man of the match performance to get that game winner. Other than that, not a whole lot to say. Yeah, Sarabia subbed on 87th minute and yeah. just and assisted Lamina's goal and scored that banger. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Wolves up to 12th in the table. Not uh, that is not where I thought they'd be. Gary O'Neill doing a bit of cooking, one may say. Mm, yes. Well. Yes. The what team other that, big, any other big games that happened this week? Yeah, the okay. team that Gary O'Neill got fired from, Bournemouth, getting a 2 0 victory over Newcastle, Newcastle Talk United. Talk about a beat down, <laughs> injured squad. Dude, yeah. Right it's there. it's We're, like depressing. What to was look that at, lineup truly. looking like? Let's oh, see. They had, to, they had very many youth players, like 18 year old, <laughs> several Premier League debuts. A lot like, of high number players in the in the. Bench. In the squad. Yeah. yeah, you thought Bruno Gimerich was the only high-numbered player. No, man, they got a ton. Well, they had, I believe it's Lewis Miley yeah. playing in the midfield. In like He's the, 17. In the double pivot or the cam roll. No, I think it's the double pivot because you got Longstaff and Willick, and Willick's going to be the one getting forward. But, I mean, they're missing strikers. Like, Callum Wilson's out and... Mm-hmm. Isak's out, so they've got Almiron on the right, Anthony Gordon starting down the middle, and it's not like Joe Linton hasn't played on that left hand side before, but but he's, he's honestly he's found his spot more in the central midfield. Yeah, in, my in the midfield. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you watch this game, Newcastle fans will say that it was boring. I think Burnmouth fans will be like, "Dang, we were in we were in control." Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Full like, driver's seat. They really were running that whole game. Yeah. So Newcastle just couldn't string anything together, and it's not like. I don't think Bournemouth really created like quality uh, like opportunities. Mm-hmm. Like the one opportunity, Semenyo tries to play a ball in, and then it like knocks off of two Newcastle players into the path of Solanke, who slots it into the near post past mm-hmm. Pope, who I think is uh, kind of got some interesting positioning there. Um, and then the second goal is a header by I think Semenyo again, and he, he like heads it into the post. And it just like bumbles around and then Solanke like throws a leg at it and puts it in. It was a 2.46 to 0.49 XG game with 19 shots to eight for Newcastle. So, so. the scoreline made sense. Yeah, like, it statistically. definitely adds up. Yeah. But I mean, if you're a Burnmouth fan, you feel so encouraged by Dominic Solanke. 
you're like, I don't know, going into the season. And he's literally I, dragging them. <laughs> yeah, I, going into the season, I didn't think he was he was that guy. I really felt like they were going to be the ones going down. They they still are bottom of the table. But still, yeah, pretty decent potential. They're um, at nine, Luton's at six. Points. Yeah. Yeah, points. So, not a lot separating them other than one victory, which, you know, week to week for teams in the bottom. Mm-hmm. Could happen, could not. Could go the rest of the season without winning a game, Luton. So, yeah, this beat up Newcastle side. I'm thinking just about anybody could look like prime Real Madrid against them. Like, <laughs> I don't know about that, <laughs> but they're definitely like the fact. The fact that Burnmouth was in the driver's seat, they have been super, super underwhelming, and so to see them actually like be able to string together passes and get forward and and be a little bit creative, I think is only testament to the fact that Newcastle are, are so Listen to these dry. Uh, these upcoming fixtures for Newcastle. They got Chelsea on November 25th. Straight PSG back from... that same week mm-hmm. for Champions League. Man U, small club. So that's a little Probably bit, a dub. bit of a break. Probably yeah. a dub for Man U. You think? I mean... I don't know. At that point, now they're equal. <laughs> we got to see some Newcastle players come when back. When is that fixture? Uh, December 2nd. December mm. 7th, they play Everton. Not, a, not an easy fixture by, any, by any match no. um and then they got tottenham december 10th and then they got ac milan december 13th that same week so yeah. tough run for the for the injured newcastle squad we'll see yep. what so, they can do with that for the injuries for this newcastle team luckily they have some people coming back relatively soon so sven botman's gonna come back late november okay. jacob murphy's gonna come back late november i thought he was having surgery is that confirmed it, I thought mob not always not always accurate. But yeah, it says late November on Fat Mob or yeah on Fat Mob, but it says, I, I know he had like shoulder issues. Yes, yeah, sure. he, like, he dislocated his shoulter in that twice. Yeah. He, had, he had it dislocated mm-hmm. in Dortmund, and then he came on in the Arsenal game versus the Arsenal game. It dislocated shoulder. again, mm-hmm. and so like now he's for sure having surgery. And I don't, I had him on the fantasy, so I think he's out for like three months. He might really, be, yeah, yeah, he might okay. be done for a while. Um, mm. and then. Early December, Matt Target, but that's not really an important player to the team. Callum Wilson, kind of day to day right now, and then that's a massive blow because yeah. Isak's been out. Isak's so who, out until late November. So who so. is even gonna st- like? Who They're playing Gordon strikes down the for him. That's yeah. that's terrible. Yeah, not a good look. Two injury prone strikers. It's not a good look. Yeah, I would know about it as an Arsenal fan. We're we're currently missing our two strikers. So I wish Mo. I could ask Mo what he thought about playing Joe Linton down the middle and then Gordon on the outside. That's what Joe Linton was to like yeah. start his Newcastle career. Yeah. He came from the Bundesliga as a striker and could not score any goals because mm-hmm. they were still under like the old regime of Newcastle. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, he's had a resurgence playing midfield, so I would leave him there, but I agree. Maybe sw- swap him and Joe Willock. Yeah. And Give put him, him up more, on the wing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. More attacking. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Newcastle's got to figure it out, um, especially with all these fixtures. Who else up. needs to figure it out? Mm. I mean, Man U barely figure it out. It wasn't convincing. Not an, not by any means. Nope. Yeah. They end up getting the 1-0 victory over Luton. Off of just, I think it was like a chaos corner or chaos cross. It was and a chaos it bounces cross. bounces out to, to Victor Lindelof, and he just smashes it home. But, uh, dude, if you're a big club like I would say Chelsea is, uh, you put up at least three versus Luton. Yeah. Right? yeah. Mm-hmm. To feel so, good about yourself. I think you have to. Yeah. Rasm- I mean, look, Luton's a little frisky right now. They are they were coming <laughs> off of their their 1-1 draw with Liverpool. So Yeah. They got Andrews Townsend in the, in the, the, squad, in the squad again. Yeah. Yep. They were doing a post-match interview with him. Uh, after one of these games, it was either Liverpool or Luton or or Man U, and uh, he was just like they were telling him about his upcoming games that he has going on, and he was just like, "Oh, bro, <laughs> he was, pretty, he was, he was like, like, really? Oh, shit. <laughs> he was worried. He was Are worried. You sure? Yeah. Um, but I'd love to see them stay up. They, I mean, this this result doesn't help. But one zero versus Man U, eh. that's not a bad result for Luton. Obviously, you're not happy about losing. That yeah. gets points off the board, but could have been a battering. Yeah, man, you need Hoyland 
to stop being a Champions League merchant. Hoyland generated an entire 1xG with three chances inside the six-yard box oh. and converted zero of them. Damn. 008, 009. How many more double O's are we going to go with Rasmus Hoyland? I don't know if it counts as double O when he's like tied top goal scorer in the Champions League group stages right now. It does. It does count. The, if we're it talking about the this prim- prim- this is yeah, we're talking about prim- prim- podcast. Yeah, I know, but he's he's looked good there and can't seem to get it done here. Okay, who did he do it against? Copenhagen, and they lost that <laughs> he game. He scored two against Bayern. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well. <laughs> I think he looks good, man. I hope that Ten Hag is able to get something out of him, or they get Ten Hag out, and someone else can. Because I think if they continue this in incapacity to score goals and start going into some big fixtures, like I'm sure they got to play Chelsea at some point. I don't think you guys have played each other. I know they got to go play an Aston Villa at some point like they're gonna lose they're just gonna lose those games like probably pretty convincingly like they kept it respectable with Arsenal until the 90 something minute lost to Tottenham convincingly lost to Brighton convincingly who now looks like a dumpster fire we can talk about them next like they are going to be struggling for a top four if they don't figure out how to score some goals because right now they're in sixth with 21 that's four points off fifth and they're in it six doesn't with, get any easier. <laughs> six with a negative three goal differential. That's nuts. That's when crazy. When I look at their squad, like nobody looks <laughs> like they're supposed to be there besides maybe Bruno Fernandez. Like everybody on that squad, I'm like, yeah, Anthony, rotate him out. Fidget's horrible. Better. Yeah, actual, I mean Garnacho, what's do he done for merchant. you? Hoyland, 009, right? Garnacho, I'm down to, like, I think it makes sense for them to give Garnacho time kind of as the young. Yeah, he is 17-year-old or whatever. But you can't rely on him to be your you left can't. winger all the time. No. Uh-uh. Sancho was a complete flop. McTominay turns out to be your only offensive threat for yeah. the past three weeks here. Which so. is hysterical. Yeah. I just never want to see any delusional Man United fans try to compare Holland to Hoyland ever again. I'm honestly surprised to see Man U at sixth. Like, Me too. They've, it, no, they've, it is surprising. They've gotten results. They've just lucked what out getting. of a lot Got of results. You guys have to answer very fast. Who's a better team, Man U or Chelsea? Right now, go Chelsea. Chelsea. I've said what I've what I've I've done what I needed to, boys. <laughs> <laughs> done what I needed to. Um, it's a the, pretty easy one, I think. Yeah, Chelsea just has like people. It's just that crazy. Can score goals. They're in sixth. Yeah, Man United yeah. somehow gets these like we think of them as a bad team and they get results kind of yeah it's it's <laughs> like really hard fought results like the sheffield game where they're down one nil in like the 90th minute and scott mctominay scores two in mm-hmm. eight in, minutes to yeah. like pull it back it feels unsustainable it does but and i guess 10 fraud has got to keep his job if he's fighting for top five like yeah i mean they i feel like they might regret selling anthony alanga right now who's mm-hmm. playing for nottingham yeah. And I think he's got like three goals and two assists in the league, whereas Granacho's kind of just over there hanging out. Like he he produces, but not in like the the f- kind of final product area. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I just feel like their their main issue is obviously that like ninety percent of their back line is out. They're still missing Varane. They're still missing Wambasaka. Wambasaka. They're still missing um, Shaw. Luke Shaw. They're still missing Martinez. Yeah. So. Their whole like starting back line, Juan Bissaka was back in mm-hmm. the middle of the week playing in the Champions League. But when you don't have that kind of base in your team, it makes it really difficult to kind of push things up the pitch. Yeah, but they don't have base or treble. They don't have they either got one. Nothing. <laughs> they got nothing. Honestly, Lissandra Martinez really does not impress me either. I really feel like their back line the is... Butcher? Is in trouble as a whole. I, he's not shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> His little five foot eight ass. Like Dude, I, I can't think, believe he's a center back. No, I think he can be good. He, I, he can be good. It's just he's he plays for Man U. It's just a broken club. Yeah, it's the whole thing. Throw I mean, it he, all away. They had the most clean sheets in the league last year, and he was part of that. Mm. Yeah. So I think That's that, a, another surprising stat. Like it's yeah. like they just do better than I have them pegged in my head. So <laughs> it's weird, but. We can get on to some not so weird fixtures now. We Villa, got, yeah, that's Villa, not a weird one. No, it's not a weird one at all. Fulham, you know, just probably the fifteenth or sixteenth best team in the Prem, and look like it week in week out. Anthony Robinson scores an own goal in this one. If you watch like the highlights for that, it's a ball in from Yuri Tielemans to Diaby, who gets like a toe on it, and it just is going 
wide. Mm-hmm. Like it's not going in the goal, and he starts going to celebrate because he thought that he like scored a goal, but really Robinson just like kicked it in because yeah. he had no other choice. I saw I saw a hurtful chant as a American, a U.S. men's national team fan that was oh. like, it was like he can't attack, he can't defend. Anthony Robinson, our fullback. <laughs> <laughs> it was doesn't even was rhyme, it. you wankers. Yeah, it doesn't no. rhyme. Get the creativity up. Yeah, come on. But I saw that, and it gave me a little bit of a depression. Mm. That's his second own goal in like three weeks, I think. Really? Yeah, I'm trying to remember his last one. Because I have him on fantasy. It's all right if you can't remember it off the top of your head. John McGinn scores kind of a banger in this one. Sends, sends Paulina. Cooked Paulina. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't really even that crazy of a move. He just like no. did a little side. He took a nice first touch, and that's what really set him up. And he hits the John McGritty. Yeah, the John but McGritty. But he, does it, he, just <laughs> he like, just does it so horribly yeah. and disgustingly that it's hard to watch. It's the most Caucasian gritty I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> John McGinn might be the most Caucasian man I've ever seen in my <laughs> it life. Be, it might be the most Caucasian name I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, Raul Jimenez gets his first goal in, oh my God, how long? Long time. Know, long time. Probably I, a year. I tried to find those stats just now and couldn't do it. But uh, I, I take back what I said, Raul Jimenez, because I said in a, most, a very recent podcast, I don't know if it was last week or two weeks ago, that he might go a whole season without scoring a goal in the Prem. And I lied because he's got his goal. I don't know if he'll get any more, but he's got one. So, moral of the story, Raul Jimenez greater than Rasmus Hoyland. Yeah, at this point. (laughs) And then uh, a player that's a better striker than both of them, Ollie Watkins, coming up with the third goal in this game for Villa to get a 3 1 victory. Leon Bailey coming off the bench and getting an assist. Sneaky production. Leon Bailey off the bench and Oh, my gosh. Like, you watch him. I was uh, there was a fantasy trade thrown around my way, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Dang, do I get Leon Bailey?" But he doesn't start, and that was no, what really just... put me off. But he's got. Let me look at his numbers here. Let me get his stats. What's? Mm, it's like weird because Musa Diaby is like the Leverkusen winger that replaced Bailey after he left to go to Villa, and now. Musa Diaby is starting for Villa, and Bailey is like coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's got to be a weird locker room dynamic where y- you like used to start over this dude at Leverkusen, and now he's just week in week out banging in goals in mm. the Prem, and you're having to come off the bench. To but prove he's yourself. coming off the bench in he's got six goals, five assists. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. That is crazy. Like, and his minutes are probably that's way not below. all Prem. I don't think though. Uh, I believe it is. Really? Yeah, I'm on the no. prem. I'm on the prem website. Okay, you are fair looking enough. at Ollie Watkins. To be fair, oh, that is Ollie Watkins. <laughs> <laughs> Trip. Ollie Watkins already got 11 GA this Dude, year. That's right. I'm auditing the audit good, over good. here, thank folks you, thank you, at home. You. Oh, it's because I clicked on the assist. That's why. Man, oh, Marco get- Silva just need to uh, s- like bring on uh, Adama Traore more often and just let him cook like. Dude, Fuck they it. just don't have any players. They, like, really they got don't. no players. Mm-mm. Like they are rolling out a seventy-five-year-old mummified Willian. It will be who's bounced around club to club, never finding true success. He was anywhere. good at Everton last year, and now Everton he's... almost got relegated last year. Yeah, but he was good. He was like the only good player. Him and Onana. Okay, to finish my Leon Bailey rant that yeah. I've messed up terribly. Three goals, three assists, but only in 342 minutes. Yeah, that's like and a, that's hardly a goal anything. involvement every 50 minutes almost. Yeah. So, yeah. he's really putting up putting up numbers off the bench, so. Yeah. Good for Conca him. Calf legend Leon Bailey. But I I just don't see enough teams being better than Fulham to get rele- to get them relegated. But I think that they kind of deserve to get relegated because mm. they haven't invested enough in this squad after almost selling Jao Paulinha yeah. in the spring or in the what's it called the summer transfer window. And I have a feeling he's probably gone in January mm-hmm. if somebody comes because obviously they were willing. I don't know. They they're just suffering right now, and they're going to keep suffering until they get to play like Luton or Sheffield. Yeah, yeah I was about to say Fulham. They're in, they have twelve points. And Luton has six. So, I mean, Fulham has like won three games, I think. If you're looking at the table, correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong. They've won three games. All three of those games are Burnley, Sheffield United, and Luton. Oh, wow. Mm. So they've beaten like the three teams that came up. Yeah. And that's it. I wonder how they did against uh, Burnmouth. Have they played yet? Uh, I let's don't see. believe let's see. Let's so, see. but if you can find it real quick. 
Yeah, no, uh, no Kenny Tete either. He's like exciting fullback option for Fulham. Yeah, and he's. I know he was injured for a little while. Um, surprised to not see him in the starting lineup. Is he though. a right back? Um, I believe I so. so. Yeah, because so. he's a. Uh, yep. Okay. He's like Castagna's backup, I guess, right now, and Castagna's a Leicester reject, I believe. So. I don't know. They're they're definitely foraging for points right now mm-hmm. at the bottom of the table. They play they play Burnmouth December twenty sixth. So okay. that would be a big game for them. Yeah. Relegation battle. Yeah, another team that's facing the relegation battle. Burnley getting cooked by Arsenal three one. Yeah, I wasn't that surprised. I mean, it's, it shouldn't be a surprising no. result. No. Like when like Liverpool drew Luton, that's a surprising result. When uh, you're a good team and the other team's like pretty awful you come out and you win and i mean there were times in this game that it was kind of a nail biter because they started trossard at striker he did well though yeah you got a goal goal and an assist yeah Mm -hmm. um i mean i don't know the assist is off of a corner which was doesn't count anymore No, it does count it's just like well you're not like doing that from your striker position you're just like walking over and kicking it i give it to him i give it to him too i mean you count the penalty goals i'm gonna count the corner assists but soccer gets an assist and then zinchenko scores karate kid goal that was such a cool <laughs> little like dink <laughs> he just jumped like, up and flicked it yeah, yeah. it was a weird goal um brown hill gets an all right goal off of a uh, a pretty big deflection and that's about all that needs to be said about that game mm-hmm. are burnley the worst in the prem yeah they they currently are they, they currently are four four points Vincent Company sacking when? Do you think it even matters with this Burnley squad? I feel like they don't have any players either. The, I think JJ Watt screwed. was uh, hyping up Coley Osho. Yeah, he was singing the praises of Coley Osho. I saw that. Yeah. He's like the only good player on that team, I feel like. Yeah. I think Brown is actually pretty solid. Like, he could play for, like, who could use him? Fulham could use him. I mean, I think there's other players in that team that have, like, some talent. I just don't see them all collectively getting any results ever. yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's just hard they're to definitely watch. getting relegated oh for like, sure. are we writing them off i don't even want to talk about them anymore yeah the I separation between the championship and the premier league is at an all-time high i think yeah yeah so it's going to be difficult for i mean once lester comes back they'll obviously i think stick around so somebody else is getting sent down next year but i would not be surprised if three up three down i think we've talked about it before um plenty of times um, this one's not really a uh, a relegation fixture in any means. Liverpool getting a 3-0 win over Brentford, who can obviously pose some problems at times. Yes. Mo Salah with one very characteristic goal and then the other just like a really weird goal. <laughs> I don't know. We were talking about it when we were watching just it. Just standing still. He's like a pawn. He just like, <laughs> he just like smacks it. Yeah, he just hits it with his head because Simicast plays the ball. Like exactly where he's standing. It's a great ball. Yeah. But was, yeah, I don't know. It's just a weird goal. Jota's goal was nice in this one. Yeah, Jota did have a banger. He just ripped it and went had that outside swerve. Really, like I I thought Brentford would put up more of a fight, but they didn't. And I don't know. The game was kind of boring for me. It's so. at Anfield. It's like tough for anyone to get a result yeah. there, much less Brentford missing their best player. I would say, um, and Ivan Tony. Much better game. Honestly, the two two games that were really, really good, this three games. It was the City Chelsea was, was the best. Number one. Yeah. But then uh West Ham Nottingham Forest was pretty exciting. That was a banger. Yeah. Paqueta off the rip has uh gets some space and lets one go in the yep. third minute. On his left nice foot. Goal. Is yeah. he left footed? I think he is. Okay. Yeah. But and uh, then uh Nottingham Forest respond. I want to get in a goal just like shoveling in a ball that mm-hmm. Gibbs White hit at the goalie and gets saved, kind of like that Nicholas Jackson goal in the Chelsea game. Mm-hmm. How come he wasn't he wasn't playing for a few weeks? He was injured. Okay. Yeah, he had an injury. Yeah. But he's been like pretty consistent scorer since he's it's true. been playing and starting. Yep. And they um, shocked him at uh at London Stadium. Alanga gets his goal. Mhm. And um, takes his shirt off. <laughs> yeah, he took took everything off. Yeah, like, really early. <laughs> yeah, like, a bit early there, bub. It's sixty third minute, and he's like taking his shirt off and like running around. So he's just trying to show, dude. He's jacked. I mean, he was just trying to show it off. <laughs> I mean, he looks good. 
<laughs> Damn, and then uh, then you concede two more, and then it was, yeah, it was yeah. all for naught. It was Dude. also a nice goal, though. Like, he buried it bottom right. So. If you are a Premier League team, PSA, you shouldn't be. If you're letting Jared Bowen's five foot six ass score headers <laughs> off of corners, he shouldn't be allowed to do this every week. He finds a goal. Is it Jared Bowen? Is it other teams being bad and marking him, or is it just James Ward Prowse with perfect precision to Look, that spot? James Ward Prowse, incredible dead ball striker. The best. He's the in best. The league, yes. He's the best in the world, in my opinion, right okay. now. Okay. Mm. In the world, right now. Who who else strikes it better? I mean, for like free kicks, I think I'd take Alvarez over him right now. But for I'm not. I'm but, probably not either. Yeah. Why the mm. hell didn't I need to go back? Keep talking. I need to check All right. something. He's got to do some fact checking. But you get that corner goal, and then in the 85th minute, West Ham scores the almost the exact same goal off of the same side of the field corner. Mm-hmm. James Ward Prowse teeing it up yet for again. Thomas Suchek's six foot five lanky ass. Me and him. That's my cousin. We mm-hmm. built the same. <laughs> you guys would both be spinning after that goal. Yeah. <laughs> Such a weird celly, bro. He just like comes up off the ground after scoring and just goes. He does just... like a ballerina <laughs> dance or something. Yeah. Looks like he's about to fly away. West Ham finding results, man. Yeah. yeah. That's that's one of Mo's great teams right there. <laughs> if you guys listened to last That was week. infuriating. <laughs> his his ranking of yeah. what is great and what is what is what's I don't even He's care. Like, I'm not getting like into it. Perfect, great, <laughs> excellent good, shit. Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. We were arguing about it for a while. So it's not dumb. worth it. A West Ham second biggest club in London. It's a fact. Who is the biggest club in London in your eyes? Um, not Chelsea. Okay. Who is it then? Yeah, you got to define it. For I mean, me. if you, you just said West Ham is bigger Ar- than like Arsenal or Tottenham, so I want to hear you. You got to upset some it's people. It's Arsenal, man. Come cool. on. Correct. Just because that's what the table says right now. Survey. Yeah, we all Survey know. Says. We all know who it. Who it hey, really is. you know what? Tottenham's in fourth. I didn't put them anywhere close. Yeah, you're right. Tottenham's below Chelsea, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Probably. <laughs> okay. Cool. Really and slandering rea- the team that was realistically. Legally. Realistically. Talk about a a bottom London team. Crystal Palace couldn't get it done. It was a banger of a game too. They sure got close though. Jefferson Lerma, since he's been back from injury, just putting on a key pass masterclass, man. Unfortunately, <laughs> there was two moments. For two of my fantasy, and I know we don't like to talk too much about fantasy, but just my fantasy players calling for the ball, having pretty good games overall, and when push comes to shove, they just completely blow their wide open chance. Tavernier for Burnmouth and Jefferson Lerma for Crystal Palace could have mm. tied it up three three. Um, wham wham! But Eberichieze, yeah, he returns. Back. I thought that this was going to be like his statement. I'm back in the prem. Like mm-hmm. Crystal Palace is a thing. He's been playing for a couple weeks now. Well, he, he subbed on last week, and this okay. is his first start. So gotcha. now, as a, I mean, he was he was looking really strong. He's just yes. he's such a good dribbler. Oh my god, like, he's insane with the ball. He, he won that get pen, the, which was soft, a little in my soft. Opinion. Yep. But uh, he just he beat like three guys prior to that, and he's so strong with it. So like, you know what, you deserve it. <laughs> yeah, and then he very cool. One of those like slow stepper. Uh, and Pickford just yeah. stands there. Yeah. He's like, if you're gonna put it down the middle, I'm gonna stand here. But is he, Eze, just is he English? It. Is that yeah? yeah. He needs, okay. Dude, he needs his England call up because yeah, he deserves he, it. Twenty twenty five, I think. What was yeah. it? He hit him with the cross. I didn't know if that was like a God cross or if that was an England cross because he it looked like he was doing it to Pickford. So oh, it looked like really? me, and he like smirked at him. I don't know what hmm. the. We'll have to read into that a little bit more. But if he wasn't injured, I think he would be getting the England call up for this international break. But I think he's just a little too late to that party, sadly. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, Vitali Mikolenko scoring a goal. Yeah, we didn't the, even talk about it. He was the yeah, first goal of this game. Mm. Directly at the beginning of the game. Yeah. Header yeah. assisted by Jack Harrison. And then Abdullah Decore scores a goal off of a Mikolenko volley that, that just like cool. clattered off the far post and comes back to him. Screamer. It would have been a freaking banger. Yeah. Um, Edward's goal was so <laughs> weird. weird. It was like headed on into the box, and then nobody steps. Like the goalkeeper doesn't step. Oh, yeah, the center back doesn't step, and then Edward takes a good first touch, and then a quick second touch to put it in. Yeah, I, it was a cool looking. It was a cool looking goal. It yep. was just so weird. Like the the defender and the goalie, just like Johnston and I think it was Yucky Anderson or uh, could have been Ward or Pickford and. Tarkowski just like didn't communicate in any way. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's 
an assist by Jefferson Lerma, but it should absolutely just be claimed by the goalie. Yep. So <laughs> just got to clean that up. Luckily for them, Idrissa Ghanage scores a goal in the 86th minute, which is nicely slotted through by Abdullah Decore, who's ha- quietly having a, a fantastic season for, look up his stats, for Everton. Because I know he has been a baller this season. He was more of like a defensive like midfielder holding when, midfielder, and then he got pushed up into like that cam position and mm-hmm. has been an absolute beast. He used to play at Wolves, I believe, and then got bought by Everton in probably their, like, FFP, you know. (laughs) Scandal. (laughs) Scandals and stuff Mm. in those years. Uh, Because I think he went for, like, a probably like a 40 mil or so, 30 mil or so transfer fee. Dang, they didn't give Decore the assist I know, they didn't give him an assist on that. Which I'm, like, watching the – if you rewatch the highlight, I thought it was was a clear assist. But either way, I mean – decorey has got four goals this season. Not as not as great as I thought he was doing, but sorry. add that assist in there too. That was kind of BS. I think he got Ex- snubbed. Watford player, sorry. Uh, Watford, yeah, Watford. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Transferred to Everton in 2020 for a 20 million pound fee. Mm. So, I think he's living up to the money now. And mm-hmm. Everton aren't going to get relegated. Yeah, definitely and not going to get relegated. Aren't afraid of it either. Yeah. I mean, they've only got 14 points, but they're like a tough out. Like yeah. every team that goes to play at Goodison Park is like, we do not want to be here right now. Mm, let me get your gauge on uh, where you think Everton's at. Who wins next fixture between Everton and Man U? It's at uh, Goodison that's, Park. That's at Goodison? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's a 2-2 draw. Damn, you're giving Man U a lot of goals. Yeah, I mean, they just find a way to score something. It's usually like Scott McTominay pops up with one. Yeah. Like Mason Mount might pop up with one or something. Rashford is not scoring. That dude looks broken. Hey, this is the parlay god over here to my yeah, left, man. man. You just I gotta tr- if he's gonna give true. you a score line to, to bet on, just just bet on it, man. Trust me. Damn, Man um, United has Casemiro out, Erickson out, Johnny Evans out, Lissandra Martinez out, Luke Shaw out, Hoyland out. <laughs> That's crazy. We were going through the. We already went through that list, yeah. but I feel like I added a few more names to that that we didn't mention earlier. It's I didn't crazy. Know Hoyland was out. Is he out with an injury now? They said he was hurt, so we'll oh. see if he comes back. Um, I think that was our last game of the week, right? Uh, there's Brighton and Sheffield, oh, but who dude, really this, cares? Oh my that game God. is so stupid. <laughs> so Adingra scores a wonder goal. Like that is a beautiful goal where chopped he just up, picks it up off the left hand side and dribbles through like four players, passes it to oh, Guanamonte. Yeah. And he like back heel flicks it behind mm-hmm. the defense, and he slots it home near post, Great. and then they're, off the post, yeah, too. off the post, yeah, it just and looks so good. Totally incapable of scoring another goal for some reason throughout the rest of that game. Yeah, you really thought Brighton would just like run away with that. Yeah, they they're up early, just take it away, take it home. They didn't. They have so many attacking options too. Like you have Ansu Fati on your bench. Jao Pedro on your bench. It's just so surprising. I don't understand why they don't start Jao Pedro. It's so they surprising. Spent, I think they, they, he was their He's record, a record signing. signing yeah. and, and Ansu Fati started this game at striker. It's his first it, one in the Prem. Yeah, instead Wait, of... He started? Yeah, yes. he started this game yeah. at striker. Because uh, Ferguson's been hurt with a back injury, I believe. Oh. Yeah, and uh, Lalana behind him. Does anybody know, is is Matoma injured? I think Deserby just likes to like rotate. I guess his squad is weird. Yeah, he subs on 46th minute. Yeah, that is so weird because he's just so good, man. I don't know how you can just like leave him on the bench. I don't either. He needs to be week in, week out, especially when you have big players like Sully March out. Like you just you got to have your your main guys. Yeah, and he's probably the most creative player in that team. Like mm-hmm. you're missing Sully March, so you're playing Adam Alana, which you know. Not to discredit anything Adam Milan has ever done in his career, but he's not the greatest player in the world. Mm-hmm. And Matoma probably going to go for like 80 mil somewhere. You know who uh, else Brighton and Hove Albion are missing that Mickey really would want me to mention? James yeah. Milner. Mm. He could play where Solar and March plays. Talk about a multi-role utility player right there. Yeah, the definition. He's been doing it his whole career. Yep. So. Um, I mean, the defining factor of this game for me, like you're like, why doesn't Brighton win this even though they went up? Um, Muhammad Dahoud, just like he gets a straight red on, yeah. on a stamp, and I thought yep. it was horrible. I thought it was a straight red. There was controversy on the internet, but I don't know why. Yeah, it seems pretty clear cut and dry. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's trying to shield the ball, but I, I think it's pretty clear and obvious. It's red, and then, dude, after the game, Deserby's like. 
press conference, he said something along the lines of, I, I do not like the behavior of the English referees, and I think it's pretty well known that I don't like it, or something mm. like that. Yeah, like, yeah, and he was talking about how they make it about themselves. Which I think is totally true and accurate, but I'm also like, your player absolutely deserves the red. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was not really a controversial call in my eyes. Not um, the time to bring it up. No. And then after that, you get the, I believe it's an own goal. Yeah, Adam yeah. Webster own goal. I but think it, it was it was shot off a of Jaden Bogle. I'm pretty sure was yeah. the one who ripped that in there. So yeah, it was like a really one of those low driven crosses mm-hmm. that you would associate with the likes of Kevin De Bruyne. Maybe kind of. mm. maybe even a shot though. I don't know. It, it was could have been. It was hit really hard. Yeah, but Adam Webster like slides into it and puts it into the back of his own net, and then it's uh, that's it. You know, one one draw for Brighton with what I would say like. I know they've gotten some results, but if there was one team that I had to peg as getting the least amount of points in the Prem this year, it's got to be Sheffield. They look terrible. Yeah. I just don't see them. Like, Cameron Archer looks kind of promising. Yeah. That's about it. And you, somehow they have five points, which is one more than Burnley. You, which one of those teams do you think is better, Sheffield or Burnley? I think Burnley's better than Sheffield. I think if they played tomorrow, Ooh. Burnley would, like, beat them pretty convincingly. But I ask because I, I legitimately can't decide. They both have, like their strengths and they have definitely their weaknesses. I feel like Burnley can like play the style that they want to play against Sheffield because they're actually just worse, like mm-hmm. less talented than them. So yeah. they'll like perform the way that they want to. And then Burnley comes up against a better team and the better team just like takes the ball and runs it down the other. That's team. a great point, especially because Burnley just played Arsenal. Yeah. And like they try to play similar styles and like you just see you, just can't it. you do need it, class. Man. Yeah. You need class mm-hmm. to do you need that. Better players. Yeah. Ollie McBurney was one name for Sheffield that I thought was going to pop off this year, but he's been injured for several months as well. Yeah, Who, isn't he coming back though? Yeah, pretty soon. I think soon. he's coming back soon. So we'll okay. see. They might that might turn the tide for them. Yeah, and pull he's them supposed out to be big for Sheffield at least, which probably isn't saying much. Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. gives a crap about these championship teams? Send them back down already. It says that Ollie McBurney is doubtful, so you know he's probably about week to week at this mm-hmm. point, mm-hmm. which is good for them. But I don't know how much one player can change that team's fortunes. Um, in terms of the Premier League table as a whole, with the the draw, Man City are now only one point ahead of Liverpool and Arsenal, who are tied at second. Liverpool beating them on goal difference because they got a three nil win this week, and Arsenal got a three one win. And then Tottenham, beginning the slide that we all thought they would. Regressing to the mean, if you will. Yes, mm. I agree. Yeah. Uh, due to some injuries, albeit. But only on 26 points with a nine-goal difference. And then Aston Villa, one point behind Tottenham at 25 and fifth. Man U, 21 points in sixth. Newcastle, 20 points in seventh. Brighton and West Ham following them. And then Chelsea in 10th with 16 points. We don't need to go any lower than that. We don't need to go any lower than that. Um, I do love that the top five have three points separating separating them. them. That just makes the Prem so much more interesting. It's exciting. And I believe the next group of fixtures after we get back is Man City, Liverpool, Mm -hmm. and then Mm. Tottenham, Aston Villa. Oh, nice. So So we're we're going to get some separation here. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. It's going to be some separation. So if doesn't matter which of those teams, Man City or Liverpool, that drops points. If Arsenal can get a dub, they can, you know, close the gap on somebody. Who does Arsenal yeah. play next? That that's interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah, and they Ar- got, Arsenal. They Brentford. They play Brentford next, and they can be a little bit of a a, a bogey team. So. Yeah. Got Arsenal don't like to be in the driver's seat though. They don't like to be in first place. We were in the driver's seat for like eighty percent of last season. Yeah. But if and Arsenal then got, was the and end got one injury to William Saliba, what was the end our, result? Our season was over. Like that. What did you guys look like without Rodri? Lost to Wolves? Lost to Arsenal? Bad. Ooh. 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 Yeah, but then Kevin De Bruyne will be back and it all will be absolved anyways. Dude, it sucks that City are still so good without him. Like, I don't understand. What's going to be the difference when he comes back? Is Are they going to be like, way the better? There will, be, there will be no ties to Chelsea. I can guarantee you <laughs> that. I don't know. That game was so chaotic. You just knew that another goal was going to come at some point. Whenever yeah. like someone broke the deadlock it, there was another one coming i i felt that the whole time mm. i just feel like de bruyne controls the tempo so well and probably wouldn't let the game get that absurdly back and forth end to end i mean it was fun to watch but man it stressed me out i mean yeah i don't i just don't know where he slots into this lineup 
Like who's dropping I don't either. to the bench? I think it's probably Bernardo no. Silva. I'm thinking it's Julian Alvarez, truthfully. No. What? No, it's not. He has been on worse form than he started the season, for sure. More, most yeah. recently, yeah. Than, like, recently. But I don't know. Maybe it's Doku, and Maybe. they put Bernardo Silva out on the left. But then you've alienated both of your left wingers for a guy that can play anywhere on the field. Yeah. I don't know. Cole Palmer saw the vision. He wasn't going to play. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what he saw. This exact problem we're talking about, where's KDB going right now? Right. Like, it's true. Cole Palmer would never make that. But I will say congrats to Cole Palmer because he got his first senior call up to the England squad. Yeah, that's true. We'll be watching him during the international break. Mm -hmm. But uh, damn, I hate whenever we don't have Prem because it's like, what do I do with my weekend? I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Read a book. We're going to have to cook up an episode during the weekend and find something fun to do with you folks at home. Yeah, well, uh, we're thinking about doing some kind of tier list, I think, of some sort. And uh, I know Muhammad's had some ideas about what we should do for that. Okay, well, let's not tease the viewers any yeah, longer. Not, you guys got anything much. more that you want to say on this about this Premier League weekend? We match week twelve. No, no, man, bring it back soon. Love it. Peace out. Thank you for watching this episode of Our Tribes. Make sure to check us out on YouTube at First Touch Media, and all of our socials are at First Touch Three One Four. Thanks for watching.